What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of Attack on Titan. And I have no words. I have no words. This episode has left me speechless. I haven't been this speechless when talking about Attack on Titan since when we found out how Aaron became a Titan Shifter. That whole thing. We found out about that. I haven't been that. I don't even think I was even this speechless. And of course, I did form a. I did. A, I did record a reaction for y'all, so y'all will get a good. Will y'all have a good time with that one? Anyway, I, I, I don't even know what to say. Okay, I'll say. Let's. Jesus Christ! There's so much with this episode. Okay. I will say this so far, for now, till we get to right until I jump right into it. This was a fucking masterpiece. This is without other greatest episode of Attack on Time so far. Now, so we had Little Old Arm. Moving down with it. I will discuss more about him later on. Now, right before I saw the episode, I went on my Twitter, posted a couple things. But well, then I checked my trending page, right next to my notifications, and on there I said Tag on Titan, and I saw Armin. When I saw Armin, I was like, oh, why is he trending? Then I was like, oh no, oh no. My f suspicions were right. My suspicions were right, ladies and gentlemen. But, like I said, we'll discuss him, we'll discuss what went down, and we'll get to that part of the episode. But without, without enough, but without, with all that further ado, guys, enough jibba jabba. Let's just jump right in, cause whoo, damn, this episode was fire. So we started it off. We got started with that epic speech from Erwin, the epic Erwin speech. Yes, I'm in my shirt. I'm in my. I'm Everyone shoot! Oh my God! You know that Evan Speed was like, "Sing on, sing on! It's gonna go ta! It's gonna go ta!" I love that speech, man. That speech is fucking out. So you get to charging. Everyone's charging, and then we start, and we so then we get to when Aaron got hit, and then we see him right we fall. And I legit thought he was gonna reawaken, like awaken and keep charging on his horse, but now we see him fall to the ground along with his horse. And I was like, "The camera!" He's like, "Do not!" And then you got Mr. Bullcut. Mr. Bulk tells tells the red tells Ginger. We like, no, no, keep on course, and they keep charging this, and they go into fire again. They fire their little, they fire fire, um, their uh, smoke smoke uh, smoke signals, and then we actually get some no, no, actually, while they were charging, uh, before they fire the smoke signals, um, Zeke said was like, it's a tragedy that King Ray's erased their memories of what happened. Because they can never learn from their mistakes, and they don't know that history repeats itself. Once again, more mysteries. That's one thing I've loved about the uh, re, about season three of Town Time. It has added so much to the mystery of Town Time that kind of got me originally interested in the series that I found interesting about back in season one and season two. But season three has been, whoa. it has been blowing shit out of proportion. It's been blowing shit. I'm like, whoa, holy shit! All these you know re revelations and shit. It's, it's fucking amazing, man. So then. <laughs> so then he's like, you know, it's like, why are they keep charging and why are they, why are they keep charging and doing this all for their bull, for all this, for this bullshit honor, it's bullshit. <laughs> he crunches the rocks that were in his hands, reducing it to nothing but dust. He's like, oh, I reduce it to nothing but dust. That is my best deal impression. I'm sorry, I'm not doing a decent job of doing deals English voice actor or Japanese voice actor and, ja and with English dialogue. Excuse me. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, you're nothing like your father, see? And crushes out the ball. Remember to have fun everything you do, which makes me curious. Who was Zeke's father? Was he an asshole? I assume he was an abusive asshole. But it's like you're nothing like your father. So that makes me curious. Are we gonna learn more about Zeke? Are we gonna learn who his father was? Was this was he related to King Reyes? Was he a son? I don't know. Do you? Who knows? For any manga readers that watch this video, keep your mouth shut. I don't wanna know nothing. Okay? I want I don't wanna know nothing about whatever happens with these guys. Leave me in suspense. I'd rather leave my I, keep my I'd like to keep myself in suspense. I don't like to read really know what's happening. 
So anyway, anyway, uh, man. So, so, so then, so then he grabs another boulder, crushes it up, and gets ready to pitch. Fire up the smoke signals again, and, he's, and then they keep charging, and they, and then you got Mr. Bulk. So you know, once, uh, once uh, Zeke fires up his pitch, for fires up his pitch, and he sends the boulders out. He's like, "Is this it? Is this how I'm going to die?" He's like, and then, he's like, and then he like looks over about his uh, his like, his friend, you know, the girl. I forget her name. Her name is slipping my mind at the current moment. But she's like, knowing her, she's probably sleeping in. That sounds so nice. And then he is met with boulder right to the face, and mm, we see them all tumble. He's like, ha ha, perfect angle. I thought that was a one hit KO. So then, then it's, then we find out that there was more of them, more of them charging. He's like, what? And then and he also says, before he fires up his next one, he says, why are they screaming so loudly? So fires up his next pitch, hits them, and then they all fall into it. I thought that, you know, Erwin <laughs> or somebody else is going to come in there last second, going to come in there, and you will take out our one, just go, Shingo, Sasaya, some shit, you know. But nah. Instead, he looks over at you, he's like, what are these smoke signals even for? And he looks over. His titans are down. And then, we get some of the most godlike animation I have ever had the pleasure of watching. We see Levi coming out of nowhere, and he goes for his, and then he goes for, he goes for his arm first, and then we get a flashback to Reiner and Barrett to tell him, hey man, look out for Levi, he's trouble, you know, he's dangerous, and then we see him slice his arm off completely, and with, oh my god, the art animation, man, oh, there was that god tier art animation from the first half of season three that we were missing. I was wondering, because we got a little bit piece of that god like art animation we got from that fight with Levi in the second episode when he was running around from all those military police guys, you know, from the second episode of season three. But now I was like, when are we gonna get that when are we gonna get that God tier art animation again? Because we haven't really gotten it that much throughout the season. We've gotten a little bit apart. But it's nothing above the status quo that we have already seen from Attack on Titan. Here it was and man was it awesome. So Levi goes over there, slices up his right arm, he goes over for the nape, but slices up his eye and he slides up his like, oh, what the? I cannot see and then he comes over there again, slices up his other hand, gets down, then he slices up his other hand, and then he gets down the ground and starts slicing like a madman at speed on the Conan Dabby Lug. Oh shit, he would, this would make speed, the speeds he goes would make Star Platinum and the world shit themselves. Like, it, it was ludicrous speeds he was going at, man. Just... It was fucking phenomenal. It was a crumb, man. It was fucking epic. Oh my god, I could not contain myself. Y'all will see my reaction. I lost my fucking shit here, man. It was absolutely epic, man. And so then, after he's done slicing for a minute, for like... I don't know a million times. I don't know how many times he was slicing. Le Zeke comes out there without his arms and legs. Levi grabs him by putting his bleed on his mouth, slamming him to the ground, and leaving him there, pinning him down with the blade right in his mouth. Woo! That was epic, man. That. Woo! That God's here on animation, man. Man, I love Witch Studios, man. So then Levi asks him, after you transform, it takes a tremendous time, and you have to wait some time for you to transform again, right? And then, he cuts him open a little bit, cuts up his mouth on the rat's side, I think, also cut off his eye. I don't think he went that far, but it looked like it, but at the very least, he got really close to his eye. It's like, hey, come on, answer me. You sure are rude. And then he says, I can't kill this dude. Just I'm like, wait, what? Why not? What's stopping you from killing Zeke? Kill the bastard. Kill. And then he tells them that we can, that that they saw the Titan formula, and what the Titan formula that what they can do is is like have them turn to a Titan and then eat uh, the Beast Titan. So then they and have them eat the Beast Titan. So they will become the Beast Titan that could save somebody. Even in Warlock, you know, is anyone still alive? Is anybody still alive? Is there a single soul left alive for them for him to possibly save? And we see a picture of Airwind. So, we can tell that he's going to use the Beast Tide for Airway. And then, 
He then, then from swoop, then we got the duck titan scout thing, whatever the hell you want to call that creature. Comes in there, swoops in the beast. I thought he was going to eat Levi too for a second there. I won't lie. I thought he was going to eat up Levi too. But then he just scroll, then he just goes off with Levi with, uh, with the beast titan, with Zeke. And he's like, hey, stop right there. Where are you going? Stop. Levi then detaches his blades. like, I swore I was going to kill him. I swore I was going to kill him. To... And then while he's running, was like, "Whoa!" That was a close guy. He's also saying, like, you know, how much pain he's in. But he tells all this, be all the rest of Titans left to go and kill him to go kill Levi. Now, Levi is covered in blood. His face is covered in blood. Keep that in mind, because I got a little something I gotta talk about that I kind of think we might see next week. I think I might be wrong on this one, but at the very least. I know we're close. So anyway, Levi. So um, uh, yeah. So Levi is like, you know, where I swore, I swore. So then all the tides come after him, and they're all. It looks like uh, and Levi just sitting there before he grabs, before he returns back to his senses, grabs all his last two blades and starts slicing and dicing the rest of the rain tide. Now, like I said, now one thing I do kind of locally find interesting about Attack on Titan now, knowing that information, like I mentioned before about the manga saying that you know everyone's going to die originally. It makes you kind of wonder with their select scenes in the series where you kind of look at them differently at what they were originally going to be and what they ended up being. Like I mentioned back in season 2, when Sasha was going to get eaten by Titan, the second episode we can assume that was when she was going to die before, you know, she managed to just get to swoop out of there. Season 3 here, we can ass I have a weird secret suspicion that that was where everyone's going to die, but looks like he's still alive, just from the next episode preview. And this could have been where Levi was going to die here, just in complete defeat, he would just let the Titans eat him. You know that could have been his, that could have been his death, right there. Which is, it makes it just a half time a little bit more interesting when you watch it, knowing that information. It's like you look at what scenes where characters were, could have died. It makes you look at them a little bit differently. It's kind of interesting. You know, it makes you look at like the whole scene with Sasha a little bit differently back in season two and a couple scenes here. I'm like, oh, was this where Levi was going to die? Oh, was this where everyone's going to die? You know. But anyway. So then we get back to Armin and the beat. Then we get back to Armin and everybody. And they're wondering, what should we do? How John is pretty much def is like, you know, admitted defeat. He's like, we're fucked. We can't beat this guy. How are we going to take down the beast titan? Not the beast titan, the armored and the colossal. And then Arwen gets an ID. He says, he's skinnier. He's, he's skinnier. You know, he's uh, thinner, he says. And he's like, what? The, be the colossal, he's skinnier. And so, and then he's like, you know, Hanji Siro is right. That. With that, the that the the, beat, that the colossal time cannot handle uh, a war of attrition, because we know he said with Aaron he can only transform three times in a row, and he's only about 16 meters that he uses. I don't know how much that is in feet or yards. I don't know, so don't ask me. Do the conversions yourself. And then, so I think the colossal is what 60, right? 60 meters. Um, and with it being 60 meters, that would take even more energy from him. So him being a little bit thinner would also confirm his theory about that. He also goes on about the steam, about how it works. He's probably using it from his uh, muscles himself, from everything minus his skeleton. Uh, that's how steam works. So he tells, so he tells, uh, so he tells Mikasa and all the other guys to take care of the beast of the of the of the, of the take care uh, of Reiner, while Aaron and him, yes, Aaron and Armin are going to take care of the Colossal. So. And then Erwin, and then Armin gets over to where Aaron is. Cuts, uses his blade after he uh, blade after he shoots off his little um, grappling hook things. I guess lock him in place. He uses his blade and and stabs him right in the middle too. I don't know if it's, if it, I can't tell if his blade actually went through Aaron or not. I don't think it did. Like Aaron saw what he was because I couldn't tell. It looked like he might have went through, but it looked like he probably didn't touch him. It, like it was just right at the edge. But anyway. Tells Aaron to wake up, but one thing he says, if this plan works, I'll never have my chance to see the ocean. Now, when I saw that, and the first time I watched it, one of my reactions was like, the fuck? Uh, I, like, this is when I started thinking, like, whoa, 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 is Armin going to die here? Is Armin going to legit die? You know? I, I had a sneaking suspicion he might actually die here. So. Um... <laughs> So, and then Armin goes, and then Armin tells Aaron, you know, hey, wake up, wake up, man. And then he tells him, okay, our plan, that's the plan, we just need to put it in action. 
And so then Aaron is just, so Armin's just lay, is sitting on top of Aaron's shoulder, holding onto his hair while he's staring dead face at the Colossal. We have Tamika and others. They're they're going past the the bass Reiner, but runs what they do. It kind of it looks like he stops. Then this massive gust of wind takes over them as he goes. Oh, and then he keeps running, ignoring them, going straight for Aaron. So Tamika is like, oh hell no, we gotta kill this guy right here now. So she comes charging in there, uses her last one of her missiles, fires at his leg, blow, pulls back the wire, and watches him blow. And he puts his hand through the building. And I gotta say, the art animation here is great. Where he puts his arms through a bunch of buildings, and he just and his arm just slides over them, and you see all this destruction as he falls. And he's like, what the hell? What, the, what that broke through all my all my armor and stuff? What is this? And so then you got Mikasa and everyone's like, no, we got to kill him right here and now. We have to protect Aaron and Armin. And so they're going in there for the kill to finish the final finish off Reiner. So then Reiner looks around. He stands and Mikasa's like, I got to get rid of these guys quickly before. Got to get rid of these guys quickly before. Um, so, you know, I can survive this. So then we then get to Armin. And Aaron, oh god, fuck me. Alright. So Armin tells him the plan, I already mentioned that. But once he's sitting there right there, he's like, you know, planning on going there. And then he's like, you know, this should work, even though this is my plan. All this is hinging on is, you know, how long I can hold out. Armin says, wait. Or not, not Armin, Aaron, or at least he thinks to himself. Armin, are you planning on to? Man, I cannot wait to rewatch this and dub, man. Whew, this is gonna be epic. Which, oh, by the way, let me talk about the English dub. I have to talk about the English dub. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I keep forgetting to talk about the dubs in here, man. So, Toonami, uh, this was the first, this was the debut of the second half of Tekken Titan Season 2 dub, or Season 3 of the second half, debuted yesterday, or today, last night, debuted last night. Overall, I thought it was. Yo, great. The dub already so far so good. Can't wait to read. You know, I'm like most looking forward to is seeing J. Michael Tatum, the voice of of Air of the English voice for our for Airway, to do Yatsuka. Everybody sing the Haruka. Haruka do the Shu. Haruka Shu. You know that whole speech. That's the one scene in the English dub. Like for like, I think it was like episode six of the first time C three. I was most looking forward to when uh when we saw the whole thing with Aaron for Aaron and um. Historia, this is that same part for you. So I look forward to that one. Once that one gets here, you bet your ass that's gonna be like the first thing I talk about in my review. If I remember. <laughs> Hopefully I remember. Thank God I remembered about thank God I remembered to talk about it right here. Anyway, anyway. So <laughs> back to the episode. So Aaron, so Aaron's things are like, yo, Aaron, are you playing it? And then we get to uh, Beerpold and he's like, you know, I would prefer to get everyone out of my job, but I've already made peace with my decision on you know, I've already made peace on that. So <laughs> so then he says, so then uh, he's like, what did Erwin, uh, Armin, what is your final plan? Show me your final stand. He's like, you can see, our bear this guy getting a little lazy. He's like, show me your final, st your last stand, Armin. Bring it on, you know. So then, Erwin, so Aaron tells the plan, they get ready. And I like how we can see, we kind of see um, how, Aaron, how Aaron sees when he's in his tie form, where you can kind of see, like, where his uh, body's kind of translucent, where you can kind of see Armin just chilling there on, with oil onto his hair. He's like, you know, let's go see the ocean. And he says, don't worry, I won't let myself die. I'll get, I'll get off, I'll leave before when he gets like 30. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Oh. Allergies. Yeah, get some, have some allergies. My brother also got a strep throat. <clears throat> <coughs> anyway, anyway, so, and so they get to put their plan in motion, and then Armin's like, alright, let's get done, so Aaron kind of tries to move, but he slips, and then immensely falls down to the ground, but he holds himself up against the buildings, trying to slow down his descent, he lands on the ground, and just kind of sits there, he's like, that's it, and the like, you know, that's it, that's your plan, it looks like my theory was right, yeah, Aaron's, Aaron's dead, he's done. You know, he, he looks like he has a heavy concussion, so he probably can't even stand right now, so... And then you got Armin, looking dead in the face, he's like, Oh, Armin, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> Puts his hand on the on the top of the wall, slides it forward, trying to get to Aaron. And then Armin gets over there, jumps over, hits him right, hits for the Colossal, like, takes on there. And then the Colossal unleashes this huge heat wave, which is like an upgrade version of steam. Like, your steam was a steam, but this is a straight-up heat wave. Like, it reminded me of that, um... 
that seen in Terminator 2. You guys might remember that nightmare sequence uh, Sarah Connor had. You know when you know she's like yo yeah when she's like shaking the fence and she's like no stop and you just hear a skeleton burn to a Chris. You know that whole scene. That kind of that, this was kind of what it was. I said. And so we see Aaron Wong just sitting there taking on this massive heat waves, blocking it, trying to block, trying to survive. He's like, come on, I need to buy Aaron more time. And Beard was like, what are you doing? Why is my ink, why haven't you detached? Why isn't your anchor detached? And we find that his most moments is not creating steam. So if you don't attach to his muscles, you're good. And he's actually like stuck in between. So Aaron Man Armin Manson's get in there, stuck it right in between uh, the, the Colossus teeth. I don't know how Reiner doesn't see this or Bierto doesn't see this because, you know, in his time part, I'm assuming he's looking straight at the mouth. Assumingly, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know how well it looks like inside there, but wouldn't you at least see your mouth? Kinda? You know, like... I don't know, does anyone else do that? How would you not see an anchor pour, protruding out your teeth, you know? Or how do you not even feel that? I don't know, but whatever the case may be, Aaron, Armin's just stuck in between, Armin's anchor stuck between his teeth. He's just sitting there taking all these, like, what are you doing? Are you trying to distract me? He looks over and he's like, no, Aaron hasn't moved an inch. What are you doing, Aaron? Is this the best you got? Is this to get slowly scorched to death? And then he's like, oh, this is your foul stand. Time to end this. And then he unleashes that, and then the steam, then the, then the heat wave gets even hotter. At this point, I'm like, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Because you see his skin burn off. At this point, you can't even see his skin. His hair is completely gone. I knew he was dead as soon as we saw that second heat wave. I was like, oh, yeah, you, he's dead. He's dead. And then once we see, like, I don't know what that was. It's, like, parts of his skin, meat. I don't know, but we see some stuff coming off his arms. We see his hair, his black scorched to black. All you see is his teeth. You know, he's like, I gotta survive. Er, er, do it for both of us. See the ocean for both of us. And then he just flies off to oblivion. And then he looks over and we find out that Aaron managed to uh, seal himself off. With He managed to seal up the exit again. He, and oh my god, this scene here was... Ooh, this part here was so epic, man. This was the best part of the episode. Like, the part with Levi, like this, like the part with Levi was probably my favorite part of the episode, but these two right here were like neck and neck as my, as the two, as my second favorite moment of the episode and my third favorite moment of the episode. So we head over back to Reiner. So, Reiner, so we got, uh, so we got John, uh, Sasha, and Connie. They're gonna, John's gonna be the de decoy while Connie and Sasha go in there to take out, to fire their last missiles over on his, on his, on the two sides of his jaw. So his mouth opens up and hot, and, and so that B B Mikasa can get in there, up close and put in his mouth, and fire the missile, the last missile. They go into that, I guess, I guess, Ryan managed to catch it. He does, he slides his hands against the rooftop, sending debris their way, something, Connie manages to fire off his, man, Lance. Sa uh, Sasha's uh, miss and Connie grabbed her while there was some wood that was lodged in her shoulder. So she managed to get out of there because it's like, I have to try. So she's about to go in there. Gene tells her no. Then out of nowhere, here comes Hanji with the final missile, dude. And <laughs> man land on the other side of his jaw, pulls back on the thing, and bail his mouth is wide open for Mikasa. And he's like, Mikasa, go! And so Mikasa opens up. We get more God tier art animation. Thunk of it all, man. This is fucking amazing. So we get more of that god tier art animation. Comes right in there, and our and right comes right in there, and Beard and uh, R and Beard told smile. Which one thing I got knows. I don't know if I mentioned it before. I like how when Armin and Beard took come in there, when they're in their time ship, when they're in their time form, their the outline of their faces kind of match what the uh, what their what their time forms look like. Like Arm, like with uh, Reiner, his the top part of his face is kind of like, there's parts of his skin that's kind of like sunken in, where it kind of has a little bit of the outline that he has when he's in his arm type form. Beard, though, he's straight up just missing skin in certain parts uh, where the beast, where his type form is. The only one that doesn't really change much is, the only type shows we've seen that don't change at all with their, with their faces is uh, Aaron, Zeke, and I believe, uh, believe, also, um, uh, ah, crap, I'm, uh, why am I blanking on her name? Annie. Annie. Yeah, I think it was Annie as well, or the only Titan shares we've seen so far that haven't, uh, haven't had their faces changed to match, like, what their Titans look like. I think, I could be wrong on that one. So anyway, 
So all right, so he so Mikasa comes in there, fires up the missile. Air, um, uh, Ryder comes blasting out from the back where his nape is, and he says, "Fly!" Mikasa grabs him, and it was great stuff, man. And also, one thing I've got mentioned is that too, we actually see slowly our uh, Aaron's or Reiner's skin start to regenerate uh, throughout the day episode, where we see Kyla grow a little bit more flesh, a little bit more flesh, or a lot more skin, more skin than we saw before. I remember last week we saw his brain wasn't clean as hell, his eyes were just by themselves. Creepy stuff. So you see that his skin started to regenerate. Um, and I already mentioned what happens with uh, Beartold. So he gets out of there. Then we head over back to Air. And after the, then we head over back to Air after every, that, the whole explosion. And then he looks down. And that's when he sees that Armin, uh, the Aaron, hard. So he's like, oh no. And then it comes out of nowhere from the back of him. Iron comes up. I'll call the Arnon Major Heroes God like as well. And he lands right on, the, on his... Um, Lands around the nape and comes slashing towards him and slashes him open, and then he gets so they grabs all, and then he grabs Beardo right out of him, right out of him and it was great. So he's missing his arms and legs too. It's like. I knew it. I should have seen going to decay. Armin was just a decoy, so Aaron had time, you know, to harden. I fell for the trap, and I know, and you know, I let down my guard and everything. The typical villain stuff. So, we then see Armin's burnt corpse. Yikes! Man is that man is burnt to a crisp. That man looks like when you cook up when you cooked up some some bacon and you left it too far in the oven, or when you cook a steak and you left it too much in the oven or on the grill. You know it's burnt to a crisp. It's unedible. You know, or you when you burn a cake. You know it's unedible. It's unedible, ladies and gentlemen. So, and then we get this flashback to when Aaron and Armin first met, I'm assuming. And they're even younger here than they were when we seen them in pre -flash. Like In the other flashbacks from Season 1, Season 2, and the first half of Season 3 and also the Lost Girls OVA, they were about, what, 12 years old? 11, 12 years old kind of area? Here, they look like they're about 7 and I won't lie, <laughs> when we see Armin this young, he's actually, he's, he's, he's really cute, you know. Just look at him, he's adorable. Watch, people are going to call me a pedophile now. <laughs> They're like, oh my god, you called Armin cute! How dare you, you are a pedophile! Good sir, you. Watch, I already know it's going to have the cause. But anyway, let's be honest, Armin is pretty adorable this young, you know. Just look at him. He's really adorable. Anyway, <laughs> little weird tangent aside, um... Aaron tells them, and you know Armin's crying, and you know he Aaron. He, I love how Aaron's just hiding in the sh in the corner, in like you know under the, by this corner. It's just has peeking out a little bit. He's like, you know, man, the only reason to keep bullying you is because you won't fight back. You sure you can with losing? He's like, I didn't lose. He's like, what? Because I didn't run away. <laughs> and he's like, what's your name? And so then we get back to real time. Aaron tells him that you know I knew from the start. For all I've known you, that you were the bravest out of all of us. And that is where the episode ends, ladies and gentlemen. Wow! This episode was fucking amazing, man. Uh, now, do I think this death is permanent? Because my man, Platinum Equinox, uh, said something on, on Twitter. I, I tagged him in a post. I uh, told him, you know, I saw the finish of the episode, man, man, was on a fire. And, it was, and I had Armin with a tear emoji with a with like an emoji face with like a tear coming down. I wasn't crying or nothing, you guys see that in my reaction, but I was like I was still sad by his loss a little bit. And it's like, oh you know how much more baby's gonna come back. And I have a sneaking suspicion he might just because we know how far Titans can go with their healing factors. Now Grant, have we now Grant can a Titan recover from being burnt to a crisp? I don't know. A part of me thinks that might happen, but at the same time, I'm not holding my breath on that. I think Armin is going to stay dead. I don't know if he actually will, though, because I, I could have sworn on the poster that, you know, the original uh, the, the original teaser for Season 3 where we saw that shot that was ripped straight from a manga cover where we saw Eren and Mikasa all looking over the ocean? And this was also in the first episode of Season 3, right when it aired. I could have sworn Armin was there too. I might be wrong on that. I, I might be misremembering. So I haven't looked back on the manga cover to check. So I'm not gonna guess. So I think Armin was there too, but I could be wrong. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually stays dead. But there is a chance we might see him turn to a time shifter as well. Wouldn't surprise me. Now, one last thing I want to discuss. You guys remember in the in the in the uh, post credit scene. 
of the first half of season three when it aired, you guys might remember we saw. I, I could have sworn there was a burnt corpse, which you now know is Armin. Aaron, Mikasa, and Levi. Levi was covered in blood. Same amount of blood, same locations as he is right now. We saw all three of them there, and he was like, What have you done? Do you guys know what you've done? And Levi went to like, he like backhand Aaron, and Mikasa went completely berserk. I think we're going to see that next week. Because the time of day is about the same. Levi has blood covering his face. Armist Aaron still has like those little things that's when he, you know he stops when he got out of his Titan form. You know those little like I don't know folds or whatever you want to call them. All that's still there. That was there in the original episode. Levi, like I said Levi was covered in blood then. Here he is covered in blood. I think next week we're gonna see what happened. The context of that scene, and we're gonna see how maybe well, that's also when we see what's in the basement. I don't know. The post credit scene shows that. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, when Levi went to go and kill those other soldiers. Um, all those, uh, those the Red Man you're tied up after Zeke left. We see that Ginger actually survived everything. The dude doesn't even have a scratch on him. Not a single scratch on this kid. And he's somehow living. He's like, hey, is everyone else alive? And we see the post-episode preview. Air, he has Armin, uh, he has Erwin on his back. So, there's a good chance Armin actually, Erwin might have actually survived that. And who knows, maybe he'll become the Titan Shifter next. We don't know. We don't know. But, it looks like Armin, Erwin actually survived. So, could Armin survive too? <laughs> Fucking maybe, I don't know. But I ain't holding my breath on that. Anyway, guys, so overall, I give this week's episode a 10 out of 10, guys. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Flay. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.